My name is Ariana Colossos, and I'm a part of the NHPO Leadership Institute class, Group 4. And I'm here with April Bailey, Senior Vice President for Commercial Banking at AMG Bank of Texas. Hi, April. Thank Hi, you for everyone. being here. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. I'm honored that you asked. Thank oh, you. well, I'm so glad that you were able to make it out. I know that everyone gets really busy with their schedules, mm -hmm. and it's hard to, you know, sometimes set uh, time apart to do things like this. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I just really wanted to meet with you and, and get to know a little bit about who you are and um, your challenge and journey through the banking industry. So if you could just tell me a little bit about your childhood and where you grew up. Sure, I'd be happy to. Well, I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. Both my parents are from Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, my dad came to the United States when he was about 12, didn't speak any English. He was able to go to the University of Texas and study chemical engineering. And then my mom came to the United States in her 20s, that's why she met my dad. Mm -hmm. Didn't speak any English. She had a degree from Mexico in teaching. And um, so they both had degrees and mm -hmm. therefore education was a big part of our upbringing. I remember my dad telling us, and I have two younger sisters, that you're either gonna go to U of H or Rice. You're not leaving Houston. You're gonna stay close to the family. You know, family is a big part. Uh -huh of our culture, so I think education really helped me um, with my career from a very young age. Mm -hmm. And not just the school part, I was very fortunate to have access to music classes, sports was very big, I was able to dive in college to get a scholarship, so my family was extremely supportive um, and education and just being exposed to different uh, areas of life. Mm -hmm. So. What else can I tell you? I have two younger sisters. We're very close in age, close now. We all have different careers. One's a teacher, one's a counselor. And um, and they all live in Houston all live as in well? Houston. Uh -huh. I spent one year in Chicago out of college. Okay. Which I learned really fast that I don't like cold weather. <laughs> I was there in the spring and summertime, and then when the winter time, I was time for me to come back. But what made you want to go to Chicago? I just wanted to get away, you uh -huh. know? I mean, it's nice to come from a close-knit family, but yes. then sometimes it can, you know, be a little bit suffocating, and you want to explore the world. And, of course, they weren't happy about it at all. Uh -huh. But um, it was good to just try it and uh, meet new people, try new things. Yeah. But then I just kind of learned more about myself, you know, I've just missed my family, I missed the hot weather. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a good experience. I can really identify um, with that because I'm from Houston and my family's here. And they're like, oh, you can go anywhere, you know, when you go to college, as long as it's U of H. Right. And you're like, <laughs> okay. And so I wanted to get away and I did study abroad in Madrid, Spain, which I know that you did yes. study abroad as well. Can you yeah. tell me a little bit about that experience that and what it meant to you? A lot of fun. It was Salamanca, Spain. Uh-huh. And, you know, my parents, they were okay with it. It was like I had to, you know, beg them and I said, sure. But that was tough. Um, it was good. I had an internship there. Mm -hmm. um, so it was interesting to work and study abroad. Uh, I met great people. I have best friends with the people that I traveled with even to this day. You know, mm -hmm. really brought us close. We're all in business now. I think it just taught us more about the world you know we, yeah. you're so just into houston and that's all you've seen mm -hmm. to be exposed to other people other cultures other you know different ways of doing business it was invaluable so and how do you think that that changed you as a person well i'm i'm naturally reserved mm -hmm. you know so to have to work and ask questions you know my spanish was not perfect uh -huh. um, it brought me out of my shell you know to not be afraid and you know, take risks try new things it really helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. so. I know you spoke a little bit about how education was very important to you and your family. How would you say that, how much more would you say that it meant to you because of the fact that you knew your dad came from Mexico, he didn't speak English, but he overcame that. He mm -hmm. went to UT and your mom as well, mm -hmm. and it seems like they were able to give you you and your sisters a great life. What, what do you think about that and, and how... How did that affect you when starting your career? Well, for me, they were just role models, mm -hmm. especially my dad. I mean, he overcame a lot to yeah. get work, to achieve what he did, especially he was one of the very few Hispanics to even graduate in chemical engineering at Texas at the time. I felt that I could come to him with anything. You know, he might have been a little bit close minded about staying here in Houston, which is fine. But, yeah. you know, he really encouraged me to do business, to, to be independent, you know, to make my own money, to to just have those freedoms. Um, and my mom as well, like she really pushed us and supported us. You know, she always wanted to work as well, but when she came to this country not speaking any English, and then just having three, you know, three kids right away, it was tough, but yeah. she wanted us to make sure we were, 
we're exposed to other things and you know to work and take care of ourselves so they were great role models and they worked really hard to make sure that we were given every opportunity to to do well in school mm -hmm. they were always there homework you know helping us you know, sometimes it was too much yeah. but it was do you good homework? have you done it yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, it's nice to come from a family that supports you, even you know, from a young age. It makes a huge difference. Yes, it really, really does. does. Can you tell me a little bit about what made you go into the banking industry <laughs> and how being a woman in the banking industry has affected your career, your persona? Because I know right now there's women in the industry, but it's a lot more than what there used to be probably at the time when you got in. Well, for me personally, it took a long time to decide that banking was career path that I wanted to take. Mm -hmm. My undergraduate degree is the University of Houston in Finance. Mm -hmm. So I graduated and I really was not sure what I wanted to do at all. I was clueless. So I took a job at AIM Management, a mutual fund company, and did like internal wholesaling, which I don't even, I don't even know why that even happened because like I said, I was very reserved, but it kind of got me out of my shell. Uh -huh. um, but I knew I wanted to do something more finance related. That was more marketing. So I decided to go back to graduate school. I went to the University of St. Thomas and got my MBA in finance. And while I was there, uh, it was a couple of things. I had some friends that were at Southwest Bank of Texas, which is now Amagy, mm -hmm. and they really spoke highly of the bank, about their training program. And then on top of that, that's when I met my husband, and he started. He was starting a small business with his brother and stepfather. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me about the whole due diligence process as far as getting a line of credit, uh, dealing with the bankers and I would ask them a lot of questions like well so what do you mean they come out to your company and they learn about what you guys do and they're gonna give you financing he's like yeah and I was like well that's interesting because you have to be a people person mm -hmm. but then you have to analyze financial statements and do due diligence I thought well that's what I want to do exactly just didn't even I just wasn't exposed to banking mm -hmm. so seeing that and having friends there it just kind of helped with the dots so when I graduated I started at the credit training program at Amogee mm -hmm. which they do take some graduate students but it was mainly undergrad right so but I didn't care like I just wanted to do something that I knew that I would like and enjoy and learn so I decided to go to that program mm -hmm. and you know, as you know, you just, I know you're in the process of finishing that program. You I go am. through rotations yes. and that's helpful too, because there's a whole different, there's so many different areas of banking, you know, there's energy, there's exactly. corporate, commercial, small business. So that's an education within itself. Because even then I wasn't sure what part of the bank do I want to work in. And I, I picked commercial because you get to see all types of industries mm -hmm. from small businesses to large businesses to male and female versus being specialized like in energy or international. So, so yeah, that, the training program was very beneficial too, to know that banking is the career that I wanted. Mm -hmm. so. And I think it's really great too, because the rotational aspect of it really makes you a well-rounded individual because it's different groups, different deals that you're looking at, you know, so everything is different. It's very right. dynamic. Yeah. You're meeting out with the client one minute and then right. you're spreading financials and then you're in a meeting. So it's right. never the same routine, yeah, every day is different. which was very appealing to mm -hmm. me. And so, even now, okay. once you're in a career, after you finish all that, every day is different. Uh -huh. So if you want an exciting, challenging, different, you know, not sedentary, sitting at your desk, you know, banking is definitely the career. Exactly. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your um, mentors and who you really found helped you along the way? I know your, your mom and dad were really role models for you, but who in the industry or would you say that you could call on yeah. and they helped you? I would say my first boss out of the training program, yeah. Jerry Tolbert. Okay. I don't know if you know him. I do. But did. I was so fortunate to have him as a boss. When I decided that I wanted to do commercial, when I picked that rotation, I didn't really know Gary very well. There was another gentleman underneath him who he trained that I was more close, closely working with. And I saw how much he learned under Gary. His name is Blake. Blake learned so much under Gary. And I thought, well, I want that kind of training. Because you have bankers that are so focused on getting new clients, new deals, that maybe mentoring or taking care of, you know, putting someone under the wing is not necessarily a strain. Mm -hmm. Well, Gary, he's been doing this for 35 years. And I remember going up to him saying, you know what, I want to work in your group. I want to work with you, even though I didn't really know him. And uh, he was, just took me under his wing. You know, he convinced me that commercial was the way to go because he had seen, he's done large corporate, you know, different parts of the bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were times that I would tell him, you know, I don't think I can do this. You know, I'm very reserved. Maybe I picked the wrong field. Maybe I should go to energy or real estate. 
And he was like, no, you can do it. You know, because, you know, you get intimidated early on in your career. You know, you it's do. very male dominated. Yes. And my clients were the Port of Houston and um, kind of rougher type guys. And he was like, I can't, you know, I was intimidated. But he was always supportive and encouraging. He's like, no, you can do this. You know, you just need to get more experience. You just need to just, just try it and don't give up. Mm -hmm. And so just hearing those words, if it was somebody else, they could have been like, okay, just, you know, whatever. Okay, do that. we'll move you yeah, but no, <laughs> somewhere else. And we have a very close relationship to this day. Like he's cutting his hours now, but to have him for yes. the first five years of my career was great. Um, mm -hmm. He really took the time to explain things and would ask him so many questions. I'm sure you guys heard of it, but he didn't care. You know, he would just really wanted to help. Like just with some people that really want to help others. And that's just mm -hmm. how, he, how he was and is. I think and when you're starting your career, it's so hard. Well, it's a different transition because, you know, you're coming out of college and then you don't want to admit that you don't, don't know how to do a certain thing or you don't have the experience or the knowledge. And so it's a different boat because right. you come from college where you're like, oh, I used to tell everyone how to do things, right. you know, and now it's shifted yeah. and you have to really be open and voice all of that right. if you want to learn, yeah. you know, so and it's asking very important. questions is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, not, don't feel intimidated to ask anything, you know, that's the only way you learn. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, now that I have analysts working for me, I tell them, just ask me anything, because nothing is a stupid question. You might think, oh, was this person going to think of me to ask this question? But yeah. it shows me that you're interested and that mm -hmm. you really want to improve. So, Right. I know that banking is an industry where you really have to network. You mm -hmm. have to go out there and cold call. Yeah. You need to get to know different people in different industries so you can build your book of business. Right. So what are some of the um, organizations or maybe boards that you're a part of right now? <laughs> That's the fun part of the job, mm -hmm. is the networking and being out of the office. Um, as far as organizations, you know, there's the Women's Finance Exchange, which is a great organization that I've been on a couple of committees. It's a group of bankers, accountants, lawyers, and it's just a great referral source. And they have lunches, they have all kinds of different events, you know, speakers. So that's a great way to meet other females that are kind of doing something similar to what I'm doing now. Um, I was a Child Advocates, but that's kind of separate from work. Child Advocates is another organization that I've been involved in, just wanting to be more involved in the community. But mm -hmm. any any organization that you are a part of is just a way to meet people as well. You know, you may mm -hmm. want to do something that you feel close to your heart, but at the same time, you're still meeting people. Right. Um, I'm on the board and now treasurer of the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Right. And that's just a great organization to meet other business people, you know, entrepreneurs, bankers, attorneys, any type of business that really is catered to the Hispanic market. And that has really helped me to network as well. Because mm -hmm. even though I'm not just picking Hispanic companies as clients, it's just another group of people to network with. And, not, and it's not just networking, I mean, they have great breakfasts, um, breakfast meetings, they have um, advisors to help small businesses with any questions they may have free of charge if you're a member. So I, even though it helps me to network, I really like it. They really do try to help other small businesses and um, business owners. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, that helps definitely networking and meeting other people. Mm -hmm. It's not all about being in the office. Right. And so having said that, I know that you're on the community a lot. How important is it to you to be a leader in the community? And what do you, what is your definition of a leader? When I see leaders in the community, I, I think it's someone that you respect. Mm -hmm. Someone that you can go to and ask questions and know that they're going to make a quick decision. Um, someone that has experience. Someone that's open to, to helping. But I would definitely say respect because if you don't respect that person, I just don't see how they could be a leader. Mm -hmm. um, someone well, that would follow them. Right. Mm -hmm. Or someone that's loyal, that wants to help others. Um, decision makers. That's, that's pretty much how I define a leader. Mm -hmm. Someone that's a role model, definitely. Right. And now, now that I know a little bit more about your beginnings and your family and how you were raised, would you say that they played a vital role in the person that you are today? And I mean, would you attribute your success to them or, or what do you think has made you successful? Do you think that that was the drive well, behind? I think they started it, you know, my mom and dad, uh -huh. you know, coming from a close family, they, they were definitely helped start that. Gary, my boss, definitely mm -hmm. took it to a different level. And then my husband, um, he's very supportive. He used to be a banker as well. He's oh, a really? banker in New York. Oh, okay. So even though he has his own business now, he 
he kind of understands what I'm dealing with on a day to day basis. Right. So having him, to, you know, we have two small kids, having him to be supportive of my career and you know networking and being out there makes a huge difference too. Because it's t it's not easy having a family and juggling community and work and the kids and their school. So my my husband's extremely supportive. Yeah. It'd be tough to do it without his help. Because it requires a lot of time outside of the office mm -hmm. as well. And mm -hmm. so when you mm -hmm. when you put a husband and kids and everything in the mix, it, it gets difficult. Yeah. But the fact that he wants to see me succeed, that I can ask him any question, you know, I have to like say a small speech. I'll say, okay, how does this sound? You can practice with yeah. him. And he's like, sure, you know, I'll be happy to help. Or he'll be like, no, this is terrible. Uh -huh. <laughs> I need to re you know, regret this. So it's good to have that. It makes a good difference. That's good. Well, thank you very much, April, for coming out. I really enjoyed our conversation today. No, thank you for asking me. Thank you.